Welcome back to the check-in. My name is Jared, and today I'm here with Karun. On this quick check-in, what we're going to do is we are going to give our thoughts and give a quick review of the 2024 Bitcoin mining mid-year report that Galaxy recently put out. I'm going to leave a link in this episode's description so you can go get your own copy. It's a 19 or 20 page PDF and it really dives into everything Bitcoin mining. So if you're into Bitcoin mining, you need to download this document. Karun and I, like I said, we're just going to kind of go through and talk about some key takeaways. Now, if you get into the document on page, I believe four, there are some key takeaways and we've gone through the document to kind of reflect some of the bigger takeaways that are maybe outside of what is listed here to give you an idea of what the document was about and hopefully entice you to go download it. Like I said, the link will be in the description. So Karun, let's go ahead and start. Now, you and I spoke before we recorded here, and one of the things that we both found interesting were the statistics around the transaction fee volatility, which can actually be found on page six. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, definitely. Thanks, Jared, uh, for having me on today. Um, yeah, so like you said, this report was amazing. Galaxy always does a great job with their mid-year and end-of-year reports. And like you said, one of the things, one of the key takeaways that I had was just the breakdown of the transactions and the types of transactions that have occurred in 2024 on the Bitcoin network. Um, so for me, it was a it was a huge surprise to see that only about 50% of the transactions are defined as financial transactions, and that the other 50 are kind of split between ordinals, runes, and uh, BRC20. Specifically, the, the count of runes transactions to me was, was astounding, given that it only launched right around the halving. I think Galaxy quoted that uh, since around the halving launch, over 60% of the counts of transactions have been allocated to rune types of uh, transactions. Um, and then lastly, the, the last takeaway kind of on the transaction breakdown was that about 20% of the re revenue in fees have came from around the having day and the three days after um, when was that that rooms launch occurred so for me the takeaway based off that those facts are that clearly the reality is that there's demand for bitcoin block space outside of just purely financial transactions um, i don't think i'm saying anything groundbreaking here but like as more use cases are developed on uh, the base layer for uh, block space fees are going to explode especially when that bull market returns so Again, not, nothing groundbreaking here, but as miners in the space, it, it's nice to hold on to that hopium that during these days of record low hash price, you know, hopefully revenue will explode <laughs> when, when the bull market returns. Yeah, I don't think you've said anything that anyone's going to, you know, be like Karun, I don't know, Karun for the president of all Bitcoin mining. But I do think it's worth repeating what you've said here. And, you know, the stat, it says, you know, since their launch on April 19, 2024, we're talking about runes here. Runes represent an average of 63% of all transactions on Bitcoin. So will we see more transaction fees go to, as they've called, non-financial transactions once we get into the bull market? And I think as Bitcoin miners, we're kind of like, you know, we'll take fees however we can get them. But What's your thought, your candid opinion? Do you think that's like a yes or a no? And Yeah, I think so. And like if the hype continues, you know, I, I think the transaction fees are just going to move upward. And then another thing that Galaxy had pointed out is that, you know, if, if runes, the hype is, keeps exploding up, then that's going to push the financial transaction fees also uh, to, to move to a higher level. So, yeah, I, I, I'm in the camp of yes. I too am in the camp of yes. And I think as Bitcoin miners, it would be an exciting thing to continue yeah. to see that happen. And honestly, like you said, you didn't say anything groundbreaking, but I think saying those numbers out loud is kind of crazy that since the having 63% of transaction fees on Bitcoin have come from uh, runes, I think that that's a pretty surprising uh, stat that we both called out as we looked at this document. The next thing in one of the, I want to call motifs or one of the themes that continued to pop up throughout the document was AI. AI is obviously going to play its role in how Bitcoin miners move forward. Anthony Power, who writes articles for us, actually had an article that came out about a month and a half ago, and I'll be sure to link that in this, um, in this episode's uh, description, where he talked about how there's now a difference between pure play miners and then essentially miners that are dipping their toe and maybe more than just their toe, maybe their foot or their leg into the HPC hybrid company type structure. And when we mentioned this off mic, you had brought up some really good points about how this is going to change 
miners' ability to leverage, you know, some of their infrastructure and some of their fleet and just basically some of their assets to be able to hopefully access capital that maybe they couldn't do in the past. So could you talk about that a little bit? Yeah. So Galaxy does a great job pointing this out in the report, you know, with the inclusion of AI and these miners have been forced to kind of diversify their business lines, lenders are coming back to the table, right? At, at the end of the last bull market, a lot of, there was a lot of carnage in the lending market. We saw a lot of loans being taken out against either Bitcoin or against the ASICs themselves. And when there was a huge drop in valuation of either of those assets, uh, there were a lot of defaults that came with it uh, on the loans. But now with AI entering the mining space and these companies kind of securing large amounts of power capacity, these lenders are now able to underwrite those as assets. So even when there's a um, huge downturn in, in the Bitcoin price or even in the mining economics, they are able to kind of rely on this energy capacity that's going to be used for other things other than mining whether it's AI or just typical consumer demand in the US or in other countries. So that was uh, definitely something exciting to read about that that Galaxy believes, and I agree with it, that the lending market will return in 2025. Um, so it's so exciting to see how that develops. Yeah, that's a great angle of AI playing a part of you know, being, as I said, these, you know, hybrid, hybrid company structures from the, from the HPC standpoint into Bitcoin mining. And w within the article, I liked what it said, because it kind of mirrored something that Anthony Power had said, and I referenced this earlier, but there's many companies right now that are dipping their toe, their foot, whatever the analogy, they're getting into AI to get some exposure to that. And they're seeing a pretty rapid rise in stock price. I think it was like 4X since they started to do this, uh, you know, since they started to roll out that strategy publicly. And the question that Anthony Power asked, and that's also reflected in this is kind of like, yes, that's great. That could lead to there being fewer pure play Bitcoin miners with mega sites into the future, but we're still to see how that plays out. We still need to give it a year or two to see how they can operationally manage, you know, new, basically new compute. Um, I think right now there's a lot of hype around it and I'm interested to see how that actually plays out, especially for the public miners. And on page, let me just make sure I reference this right. On page 12, there's a really good graph that says pure play miner versus mining HPC hybrid company. And they call out basically core scientific and the core weave contract announcement that happened in June. And that since then you've seen many more uh, mining HPC hybrid company type structures kind of come online and how the, that's, it, that's not reflected here, but we know that that's also uh, really impacted public companies, Pubco's uh, stock prices, which is another really, I think, an interesting one. Um, and then I think the third takeaway that we had, we both were like, this is interesting, is the overall hash rate forecast and how that's kind of changed. Um, this was one of the main uh, takeaways. And within the document, it says, in our annual report, we estimated a range of 675 to 725 exahash for our end of 2024 hash rate target. This was an annual report that was put out um, at the beginning of the year. They said, however, we are now revising our growth upwards to between 725 exahash to 775 exahash. Um, do you want to uh, talk about that? They have a couple of really cool graphs on 15 that I think that we'll also put, put up as we uh, you know touch upon this point. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you can see that the, on that graph on page 15, the, what they're anticipating for the public uh, minor percent share is, is astounding, especially for the growth that they're expecting by end of year, about 109 exahash. And for me, what's interesting to think about is, you know, I know we just talked about lending, but if that those type of opportunities are also now available to private miners, whereas, you know, the public miners can kind of just much more easily raise capital. But if pu private miners now have these tools, how much is the private market going to grow? So for, for me, the takeaways are, you know, if, if you're a miner, whether it's public or private, uh, you really want to be able to secure energy capacity fast so that you are able to have access to these tools of like the lending opportunities when that market returns in uh, the beginning of 2025, as Galaxy has kind of stated. Um, but you're also now competing with large players, right? You're, if you're a private miner, you're competing with the public miners. You're competing with larger companies that are outside of the mining space that want the energy demand for AI and whatnot. Um, so yeah, that, that was kind of my main takeaway. You know, if, you, if you're a miner, 
really start considering diversifying your your revenue and also securing energy capacity fast. Yeah, and just on that last little bit, there is a part in in a section that's called the multi million dollar megawatt where there is they talk about the quote arms race for power capacity that is taking place among Bitcoin miners, HPC, and, and people looking to you know support AI. That was another large kind of theme from this overall uh, report. I I think generally, would you say that this is pretty bullish for mining? How do you how do you feel after having looked at this report? I, very bullish. One, you know, like the loans we've talked about a lot, the the type of projections that Galaxy is putting out there in terms of the overall net, network growth and just the abilities for miners to diversify. So, so I came away, you know, considering this a very bullish report. Yeah, me too. I came away very bullish. Just the fact that they've since January when I think, you know, towards the end of 2023 and the beginning of 2024, when they put out their annual report, this is Galaxy, the fact that they've gone and revised their overall global, you know, hash uh, hash rate, I, I thought was pretty, was pretty <laughs> bullish. And that one graph, I think on page 15, that shows that even just among seven public miners, if they all, obviously they have to, this is assuming that they fulfill their commitments that just between seven pubcos, they're going to put 109 exahash. That's at least that what they've liked to do. That's their promise or commitment. Uh, 100 exa, 109 exahash up on the network by the end of the year. That is incredible growth, um, seeing as where we are today with the hash rate. So Karun, I want to thank you for hopping on the check-in. Galaxy, great work on this report. And I look forward to reading the, uh, the end of the year annual report. Thanks, Jared.